zero it out of the budget for a couple of years now. So may I may may I make a motion? I would uh, welcome it. Uh, I move that we apply for one year membership to the National Alliance uh, Preservation Commission uh, and allocate a hundred dollars of our budget towards that membership. Do I have a second? Ooh, that was a really <laughs> close one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll only try it twice. We'll give it to Al. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. All right, okay. unanimity. Next item of business. So uh, before Scott uh, stepped off for a commission, he was our uh, representative for the Earth Fair that's being organized by the New York State, New York State sorry. No. Kingston, what an insult. Kingston Parks Department. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be held on Earth Day at Forsyth Park. and. I, I went. I attended the last, the last meeting that today. I did attend today, but uh, the previous month's meeting. And basically, every commission agency is going to have a representative at this fair talking about, you know, their efforts to be more sustainable. Um, uh, there's also going to be. Uh, oh, trades representatives, uh, people from the building trades, uh, people who, uh, from uh, energy companies. Uh, or people from nonprofit organizations talking about their programs. There's going to be tutorials, it's going to be uh, speakers and presentations. It, it, it's going to be kind of an ambitious earth fair. So, in order to be a have a spot at the fair, we need to fill out an application. And it's very simple. It's free. It doesn't. We don't have to allocate any money to it. And I had representatives from HRPC man the table. We can hand out historic district maps. We can talk about, you know, loving your historic home. We can talk about window repair uh, versus replacement. Uh, I also suggested to Julie Noble, who's the lead organizer uh, for this fair, that maybe each OPC would do a 30-minute info session talking about window restoration. And we have a friend, Leslie and I have a friend in Tivoli, who business is restoring historic windows. So maybe I can entice her to come over for the morning, and you know, we can do it. Uh, a program, a 30-minute program, talks about windows. Wow, I think that would be wonderful if she's willing. I haven't asked her yet. I suspect she would be interested. She would be great, and, and yeah, she's available. Yeah, because it, it is one of those issues we bump into all the time. Yeah. And so I think it would so be appropriate for thing, us. I, we kind of already agreed to do it at a previous meeting, so I will submit the application. I also volunteer to man the table. I would love it if... I think we should us. get more than one. Where's the date? Uh, April 21st, so it's the weekend before our conference. Uh, Saturday, Saturday, April 21st from 10 to 4. Okay, so... Yeah. Okay, the only thing, do we need to send a representative to that meeting? Do we need to send a representative to the meeting in, in Scott's place, or because I couldn't, I was interested, but I couldn't go. There I can go. I'll go to a, a couple of the meetings, but it seems like it's more of an organizers meeting okay. and less of a. I didn't see much that I could offer. Okay. So and, and Julie seemed to accept it. That's fine. Okay. So. Okay, that's great. Um, I could pitch in in the afternoon. I teach in the mornings. Yeah, so if you could put that date on your calendar, April 21st for Scythe Park. I would love to be there, but I am supposed to be out of town that day. Actually, a whole set of days. I'm supposed to be out of town then, but it's not etched in stone. But I'll, I'll okay. keep you right. We'll you have a couple to... more meetings before, so. Well, no, we'll have one more meeting before, so we can firm it up at, yeah. in April. Yeah. And try yeah, and April, like, April take a two hour block. Yeah. If you can, if you can't, just pick, pick some time so that we make sure that we have 
it would be nice to have two people there the whole time through, or as much as we can handle. If, if I know I can't cover the morning until. Oh, I can be there too. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this trip may impact my ability to go to the conference. I won't know for another two or three weeks, but I'll keep you posted. Okay. Yeah, but I hope to be able to go at least to all of them too. All right. So finally, and most pressing, um, it's a, a CLG grant application that we discussed at the last meeting. And Mark and I met with uh, Mayor Noble on February 15th and had a great meeting. We discussed almost every point we had on, uh, on the list, the agreed agenda, meeting agenda. And the mayor was on board with us submitting a, a CLG grant application for uh, a citywide preservation plan. And he said he gave us uh, the okay to work with Kristen Wilson in the grant office to put together that application. The deadline for that is March 19th. And I really got deep into preservation plans, what makes a good preservation plan, um, and how, what would the specific goals of a preservation plan be for Kingston, because every city has different needs and uh, different challenges. And the more I got into it, the more I realized that we're not ready to submit an application by March 19th. And we, you know, the whole idea of a preservation plan is that it's, in a, 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 it's a collaborative effort from uh, multiple groups and people and in, uh, individuals of the city, you know, brainstorming about how to make preservation better in, in, in the city. And, I found like I was the only one, you know, putting together this mass, massive preservation plan with no input from anybody, and it's not fair. Uh, also, Kristen Wilson has no availability to help. She has two grant applications going uh, out the door on March 16th, so 15th. So she said the earliest she could help is March 16th, which doesn't give us much time. But, and then. Also, complicating matters is the fact that it, it's a 40% match, and it's not clear how that match will be made, either in, count, in kind, but from whom, and if cash, from where. So those are major questions that need to be answered before we can submit an application. I don't see how I can, we can do, get that done by March 19th. So what I'm suggesting is that we just don't submit an application on March 19th. We move ahead with the other our smaller projects that we've been discussing. Uh, also, uh, finishing up the Midtown survey uh, to the standards that SHPA requires so we can be in good um, standing on that. And make a really strong run an application for the 2019 uh, uh, applications. Hmm. On one level, sorry to hear it. Um, on another, I think that it's wise. Uh, one thing that is, is unsaid or sort of seems to stand behind all that is coordinating a broader base and boiling it into a preservation plan. This is something that I think is important, but will be difficult for us to do as a commission. This is the sort of thing that we would normally be relying on some place like the planning department to, to pull together for us, but the planning department is woefully ignorant of what we do. So I want to talk a little bit about how we, how can we build that because you're right, on some level it can't just be us, and there are plenty of folks with an interest. I'd love to start folding in some, some realtor types, some tradespeople, some friend, organizations. Yeah, uh, friends of Historic Kingston at the very least. And there are, there's a, a whole group that does vernacular buildings in the Hudson Valley, it's sort of a larger scale, but in the Hudson Maritime Museum. 
Yeah. There Rob are, Sweeney, he would be a good resource. The Hudson Valley Vernacular. Do you know Rob Sweeney? I didn't know his name, but now I do. Yeah, Thank I you. to that organization. It's a wonderful. He's very knowledgeable. Yeah. Especially I, at Kingston. Yeah. I mean, we there are obvious people we should be able to reach out to. The problem that we have is no structure with which to do it. And that's a real problem for us. We, either we have to make this a matter of public hearings on some we don't level. Have a staff. Oh, right. But, so we have we're going through this comprehensive zoning um, process again. Right. Couldn't we maybe advocate for a preservation plan to be folded into that process, or to start? Oh, now that's an interesting yeah. twist. Advocate for the preservation plan to be folded into that process. We're wanting to have sort of more representation within that zoning subcommittee. It seems like that would be an ideal time to start pulling people together and start seeing if we can formalize a process for thinking of a preservation plan as part of a comprehensive zoning plan. Hmm. I think that that's an interesting argument, and mm -hmm. the planning department is the staff to that effort. Um, let's think. That is a creature of the city's, of the city council. So it would involve us doing something with sales job to each of our older men and women to, to, to put that forward. I think it's logical. I think it's a logical argument and it needs a home that isn't just our monthly meetings. I, you've got enough other stuff to do that we're really thrilled to get you when we can get you, but you're, I know that the building department is shorthanded no matter what we do. Oh, yeah. That's putting it mildly. I, I got that picture. Yeah. And so I like this idea, but it, it is going to be something that's, that the city council itself have to would have to embrace to make it stick. Yeah. And and, I mean, but, we really do need the city council kind of championing this. We can't be a small commission saying this is what we want to do. So I think the best chance for success is having city council support. Okay. So this is something we may need to go back to the mayor with. He and, and, and Alderman Noble are key yeah. to city council support. And I think it's a logical, uh, logical place to put it. Um, I don't know what the planning department you know, will do with it, but at the very least, they're set up to hold meetings, get committees going, uh, call call for public input, and boiling it down is a lot of what city planning is, and that yeah, hasn't yeah. yeah that hasn't changed since I was a city planner long, long, long ago. So I think that that would be a, a, a great approach. Does everyone know who their alderman or woman is? <laughs> Good. <laughs> right to their house, I know. Well, they came to yours. <laughs> Turnabout <laughs> is fair play. <laughs> so, yeah, um, on, on one level I'm disappointed because the mayor was really supportive. I think we should say a little bit about other things that came up in that yeah. meeting. He, we have a map Julie probably knows this better. That a there's a now a scanner that can handle some of the white this, format. Yeah. Yeah. White. It, this is groundbreaking for the city of Kansas. If he just casually said it, and I'm like, whoa! Is he just said what I thought he said? Yeah. Julie knew it. I didn't know. I didn't know we had it. Yeah, we were totally. I was like, wow! This is great news. And um, a lot of support for digitizing records, a lot of support for um, our proposal. Yeah, you understand what ESRI is, I really don't. But it's a, it's a mapping capability that the city has never had before now. Up till now, the city has always relied on the county's maps, and they wouldn't take our information. This has been a battle for at least 15 years. But now that the city has a program in-house that can deal with, with mapping, getting our 
our districts and the individual buildings on a map that's immediately available at the building department that doesn't require you to do what you've been doing and then supplement it with yeah it's a wonderful thing and, and you just happen to assign the subscription for the day before our meeting yeah so who will be the gis is there a gis person in the uh did he say I got the impression, and, and I might be wrong, yeah, there was the Maggot. assessor. Oh, okay. Maggot boy. Okay. Yeah, that the assessors were going to be the ones who were going to deal with it most frequently. Okay. And there, everyone, but it would be available citywide. And I think that that's, that's yeah, I think it's a huge step in the right direction. And then, uh, the signage program, he is part of the downtown revitalization initiative, one of their grant projects is the signage, the wayfinding signage program. Mm -hmm. So he, it, and while that is, is, is just for uptown area, uh, uptown does extend to St. James so we can get at least two historic districts uh, signage program and we could find, mayor is, feels like funding could be found to expand the signage program. Right, mm -hmm. and this is happening through the Kennedy Transportation Department is the lead on this, which is a little unusual, but hey, if they can work together, it's a good thing. And he was, in general, just quite supportive, and I was very happy um, with his approach toward most of the issues that we were raising. He was very receptive, cooperative, and had already done stuff that we didn't know about that was, was I think, long term, going to make the building department's job easier and our job easier. And, th and also just let the public know who we are, where we are, where they are in our eyes, um, in, in each of the districts and with each of the individually landmark structures. We also talked specifically about getting um, full state, local, and national approval for the Fair Street District. He was very supportive of that. Yeah, which, you know, further investigation isn't an easy, isn't a light lift. It is already approved at the local level, but it appears that it was approved on a whim. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but well, without a no, lot of the normal not a lot of documentation. Historical research, historical research was first done. Uh, building data was called not collected. Uh, descriptions were not made. A statement of significance was not made. If there was, it's lost. I, I no one knew it. Yeah. It's, so it was done on the local level, but without that kind of backup documentation? If that was presented on some level, that documentation is lost. Okay. Yeah, no it one just can went to it. a vote at the city council and they approved it. Uh, there's been some work done because there are blue forms for it on the SHPO's Chris system. So, but more, definitely more research and narrative is needed to make a case for a national register nomination. So SHPO doesn't have that document. Have we asked? No. No, they, they don't. They don't. We, I talked to Linda Mackey about it, and Linda said, well, it's already local, so it, would, it wouldn't be a matter. It wouldn't have to go through full review. It wouldn't need to be state reviewed. It'd go to the board for review because it, it, as a CLG, one of the perks is that we get um, fast tracked approval for historic districts uh, on the National Register. But we do need more information than we have on the historic background of these houses and the descriptions, architectural descriptions. Yeah. So that's a project in and of itself. Right, but luckily Fear Street is not as extensive as say the Rondo, so that being able to go house by house is much more possible yeah. within it. And I'm sure Friends has a fair amount of information mm -hmm. on, on yeah. many of these buildings. And I- They've been included in surveys too, so there is some baseline amount of information. Is it crazy but, to think that the kind of analysis that we need to do for the Congress level survey that was done was, and this could be combined into one project for whatever 
with whatever um, expert we're mm -hmm. going to identify? I mean, could they be packaged together, essentially? Well, I would put a volunteer to finish off the mid uh, Okay, then I won't sign you up for <laughs> That's hard enough for now. For a second. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think we would agree that we don't want to waste our grant, COG grant opportunity. If, if I, we can just right. finish off Midtown, then we'll save the COG grant opportunity for next year with we'll the big with the reservation. That makes sense. Wanna, that makes sense. Right. And, but I think the information is available locally. It's just not been pulled together in a way that. Sure. Yeah, you know, eight minutes significance. Why is it? Why is Fair Street important, and why is it a historic district? I, I don't think that statement exists. You're probably right. I have the blue forms for all those buildings, and I have the paperwork in the county when they made a vote. Where the so council the, voted on it. Okay. That's what that's I accumulated. Well, that's, and that's our starting point. Um, we may need to, to make a request over at Friends. I'm not sure who else would have info on this. I asked Lowell Thing, who was the, on the commission with you at that time. Yeah. And, and he doesn't, he's, he said, no, I think it was just one of the council members really wanted the Fair Street Historic District made, so it would... Uh, well, there, was a, there were a lot of people on the street who were supportive, and the battle was exactly with where the lines would be drawn because a couple of people didn't have a line. I think it also speaks to the lack of standards that the city of Kingston has for considering historic districts where, I mean, we don't have any standards. That's absolutely true. It's right. a matter of public hearing and then the city council's decision. And that's a big problem. And so I, I'm suspecting that there were plenty of statements made, but I don't think that there was a lot of documentation of it. I, I think Lowell is probably calling that one right. I mean, my memory of this is vaguer than his. I was relatively new at the time, but, and, and he was, I don't think he had been made chair at that point, but he'd been on for quite a while. So yeah, we're going to have to kind of create, and what makes the most sense? Um, who would feel most comfortable approaching friends, for example? Oh, I would. I mean, I'm, I, I talk with Jenny often, so. I, but I do remember she, she kind of telling me she, they don't have anything, and then you'd ask somebody else. Wow. Um, would the vernacular... I can call Rob and ask him. That would, I mean... I don't, I don't know if he would... You know, the, the Hudson Valley vernacular, their main focus is on stone structures. But I know Rob, he grew up in Kingston. He's an historian. And he, he does tours of the Rondo. Um, gives tours of the Rondout, so he knows a lot about Kingston, and and I, you know, I can yeah. ask him to find Please out what he knows. Or if he they knows have of their any own library too. And if he so. knows of any other sources, we should tap. I think That's that would be idea. great. I mean, those are the two that come but to my mind. We have the survey form on Chris, so we have survey form, but I don't know how. I don't know. I don't. From what I could tell when I read the form, they didn't seem like they were like they were any real. It was just more of. A, you know, uh, sidewalk survey, you know, this is what and what it looks like. There wasn't any real research about the, you know, original owner or architect or... Okay. And so we may need title search kind of work as well. Yeah. I know, like when I moved to Fair Street and I, I just started looking through old deeds and was able to go back and, and actually what was most helpful for me in terms of the house was Junior League of Kingston. Did, did of all that. things. Yeah, they did. I thought they looked at a lot of the houses on Fair Street, and I had old pictures from them and descriptions, and it was so. Can you, can you scan that? Mm -hmm. I if that. I can find that again. Yeah. I, but there was it was there was one copy at the library. Oh, it. that's where I got it at the mm -hmm. reference library. So if we can get that scan and put that. We started oh, a Dropbox. It's mm -hmm. gone. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, took it. Well, I'll ask Jane. She mentioned it to me last week because she doesn't know where it is. We will. it is Kevin Mack. There has to be a record somewhere. I did look for it when I was there about three months ago and I couldn't find it. So we may need to reconstruct something like it. 
if we have there to. There has to be a copy somewhere. <coughs> but this is also not Somebody's a tomorrow project. Okay. It, private it, library in their office. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon, <laughs> private library. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have it? I'll look for it. What I'll try to find it. Ed Ford have it? He what? would have He's it. on my screen. He, he, he would have it. I can ask him because he, he yeah. wants to share a map with me. Oh. That would be a great idea. And by the way, they're going to have a hundredth. They're going to have a hundredth uh, birthday party for him. I think his birthday is in May, but I am not sure. But I don't. I don't know what the plans are. I don't know what's going on. But the family is planning to have a, and he wants to give some sort of presentation. I think it would be fascinating. Okay. It, 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 he's just a joy. And he still is, even though he's not out and about as much as we would like, yeah. he's still a pleasure to speak to. Mm -hmm. I bet he has a I, I, He had that card. <laughs> if he anyone would. All the information that we want. <laughs> <laughs> and if we have to beg, we will. <laughs> we can promise him more birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. All right, any I other points? Yes. I have a question, Mark. At the last meeting, it was called to the board's attention that there was a porch constructed on the front of 52 Main Street. The property is owned by the Dutch Church. It's across the street from the Dutch Church in the view of the Friends of Hysteric Houston. What action has the board taken to see that this group complies with the ordinance? We have asked the building department to issue a citation. I believe that that happened last month. Since it's owned by the church, I would expect any response to be slow. They have to call their own board meetings to cope with this sort of thing. Um, we would be looking for them long term to reset the stone. Well, you, you can request that they appear, a representative of the church with authority, appear before you and explain the circumstances and take it from that. The board can. Um, we could send them a letter. We cannot compel their appearance. Well, oh, but if you send them a letter, it's a matter of record that you did that. Right. But that I, hasn't been done that. I, right. And, but the, no, no, uh, the building the, department... I'm yes, we the could board. also do that. Have, not, not uh, yeah, please don't... We need not to get ahead of, our, of, of the department. We need to work with, and that's important. And I, I'm, I'm really interested to know whether you know if the department got a response from the church on this. Well, we did reach out to them, and I, I kind of don't recall right now if it was from the building department or from here. Yes, um, it, who, well, who it came I, from. We said, but we didn't hear I think it was from, from our office, correct? Yeah. yeah. Saying that they needed to come here. And they need to come here. They need to get a, a, a yeah. building permit. I mean, there's lots that they've done wrong there. And, you know, they, they're a, a venerable institution and all, but they need to follow the rules like everyone else. Um, and I, I, yeah, I, and my prior dealings, specifically with the steeple, have led me to believe that they are typically slow to respond. I would give them another month and I would ask that we put this one in the minutes to, to check with you again before the meeting to see if okay. we've heard from the church. I, they, I don't know how often their board meetings are, but I, they're either monthly or quarterly. And so they need to put together a formal response to you. And if they fail to do so, we, we're going to have to do some different lobbying. But thank you for the reminder. Does that junior league survey have a name? Sir? Do you think any? The junior league survey that's missing. What what is that? Is that a it's it's a book. Does it have a name? Like when I speak to Ed Ford, I want to be specific about what the survey is? The junior league oh, oh, book. I don't know. Do you it's, recall a title? It's a social or? organization, the junior league. Women. I mean, no, 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 but the, the report league. has a name. Yeah. And I I might have it. On a paper at home, I have to go through my yeah, papers. I, yeah, I, don't, okay. I don't know what yeah, to call it. I will if I can. I, I just want to be specific so that I there's no yeah. something. I don't, I don't even I don't, I don't, the first I heard about it was last week. Was, and then okay. I spoke to Kevin about it last night. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a long time ago I researched it. It was like 20 years ago, so I should have to go back and my We will <laughs> hypnotize you to tease it out of you. How's <laughs> that? All right. 
Um, yeah, there was something. Um, uh, hi. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what grade is it? Um, I only have one year to work, so I don't have any. No, there's those people over there. <laughs> uh, I don't have any directionality. <laughs> so. Um, so I the, something reminded me. Well, one thing, two things. Last month, um, you presented. You were talking about the different grants that would be possible. I wanted to find out, is that going to be in the minutes to reference is from last month? Can we see what, what you guys are in the minute? Okay. So, I mean, and those, 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 those will, they'll be up because they haven't been up because they need to be approved. So, right. um, I didn't know if they were. I just wanted to make sure that I had a way to look at that. Okay. And then I also wanted to mention, which I should have done this in the beginning of the week, but the signage and the DRI um, mentioning uh, reminded me of this. Oh, no, sorry. All right. Um, Do I need to email you time of uh, time of sure. adjournment? Okay, that'd be great. We've got this proposed well, be um, <laughs> development called the Kingstonian, um, and the um, I think it's the same owners as Hertzogs are going to be building it. They won the there was a request for proposals, and then the mayor did an announcement that they'll be developing it. The DRI I discovered this during the DRI. Um, survey that they're doing. They had it closed last night. So um, answering through the survey is no longer a possibility. But um, if you go to the DRI section of the website, and it's hard to find it, so you just have to put DRI in the search bar of the city website, and there's a DRI page. And on it, it shows all like the plans of all the different priority projects. And the biggest one is the Kingstonian, which is where the old garage was, and then the Herzog's building on Fair Street and North Front. Um, and if I'm understanding the map correctly, that's within the Stockade District. Um, st um, the, so the, the street of concern to me, that I feel like, I hope that it's going to be on the radar of the HLDC, is Fair Street between Schwenk Drive and North Front Street. What they're proposing as it is, and what they're asking specifically for funding for, before it's gone before site, site plan review, is they're asking for funding for two things, well, three things. Parking, the parking aspects of it, but and they're all like public, public projects. It's not clear whether they're actually public or not, or whether they're going to be pseudo-public. But, um, and I haven't been able to find any information, or I don't think that's even available. That they just they decided those kind of specifics. Okay, so parking. The, well, the parking is going to be fun. Is they're asking for with the DRI money for Kingstonian parking money for the parking aspects and money for the plaza between the two buildings and money for the walkway. Now there's a walkway that goes from inside the building. It's a walking bypass of Schweig Drive to Kingston Plaza. That's, that's not how I interpret the funding. I interpret the funding would be site clearance to clear. The oh yeah, the site clearance, taking out the old garage books. and right. street improvements. Um, well, the street improvements that they're that they, they have in the plan, they, they talk about the plaza that oh, that's over um, Fair Street, and as as being one of the one of the um, aspects. And this is a plaza that is um, it's. Over Fair Street, it's like it'll cast Fair Street entirely in shadow. Um, it's it's um, you can only have access to it if you go onto the private property, um, and so there's a possibility that you'd be able to walk through it. But then one of the pictures on that site shows that. Um, should I show you the picture? No. I anyway, I I just wanna I wanna we, um, we're encourage aware you to it and yeah. and it, we. Definitely, will be reviewing okay. that when it hits. right when it hits it. Now, my concern is just that um, they are asking for funding for that, and um, I think it's it's problematic that they're asking for funding for a specific thing that hasn't been approved. That could be quite problematic, and um, it's not clear. Well, none um, of the none of the projects have all the projects that they're proposing would be public comment and review. Yeah. So. yeah, they'd be contingent on that. They yeah. would It looks though as though they would lose. They wouldn't be able to trade that money on the Kingstonian for, say, um, street trees, park benches, and and um, and a public 
plaza outside of it, it would just be lost money. Then the Kinstonia wouldn't get that money if they didn't do the plaza. Yeah, all so I know is that it just is any new, new, all yeah, it's not within your purview yet. The as a go to our review, mission. and the mayor's made clear, at least to me, that it would still go through the normal review process. Yeah. Right. All, all those projects are, at the moment, too. Yeah. Is this, is this very, this is very specific, the plans that they have, and they presented the specifics as they, a whole? Well, and, and that may be the way it ends up, or it may not. It, it, it's more malleable than the proposal. It's not etched in stone, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Fun, my worries is that the, they'll, they'll lose the funding, so I would anticipate a large battle to, to keep it, because if they, that is not approved, then there's going to be a huge amount of money that's lost. It's like you're, they're tying in money to it right now, so there's that added pressure that's being... Yep, and that's okay, always true in right. any public expenditure. Yeah, yeah. okay. And it's, it's not a shocker. Right, okay. <laughs> All right, anything else? Anyone else? I am going to move we adjourn. Do I have a second? I second. I'm making <laughs> this one James. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to email. <laughs>